I just rehearsed this in the shower. Your child is your experiment. It is your experiment. If you have a child on the way, this video is for you. Your child is your experiment. There's tons of things out there that are being done that are all what I call tools of the man, pacifiers, diapers, um, shoes, um, strollers, carriers. Those are all th baby, the baby wipe warmer. Those are all things that make you a tool of the man if you use them. You're just following in line with what you think, what you've rationalized is the way to raise your child. Now I know some of you are, are already going, what, you didn't put diapers on your kid? No, I did put diapers on my kid. But because I've been everywhere on the fucking planet, I've seen places where they don't put diapers on their kids. And I see how they potty train kids when there are no diapers. And it's super duper effective. And the cost of wearing diapers to your child and to your wallet, there is a cost. There is a cost, but we're not gonna get into that. There's three things that if I were to do with my kids, if I were to have a kid right now, there's three goals I would set as part of my, this experiment. Number one, no sugar until the child is two years old. There's no reason that on your child's first birthday that you give your child cake. Just chop up carrots. There is no reason to give your child sugar before they are two years old. It's an awesome goal to set. It's an awesome goal to set. And anyone who pushes back like the grandparents or whatnot, ignore, just ignore them. They're gonna say, oh, it's just a little bit of sugar, it's no big deal, or you're depriving your kid of sugar. You're not depriving them of anything. Set that as a goal, no sugar until the age of two. Do not put shoes on your child. Do not put socks on your child, do not put, um, um, those onesies that have feet on your child, don't put anything between your child and the ground. Now, this video requires a little bit of common sense. If you live in a place where there's snow on the ground and you're taking your child out, I understand. You don't want your child to get frostbite. None of these things that I'm offering you, you should force on your child if, to, if it puts them in harm's way. For example, you're on a boat that's lost at sea and there's only gummy bears. Yes, that's fine. Feed your kids some gummy bears. Just, just a little common sense, a little common sense. And I do speak in absolutes and I apologize, but for this video, it's a little, it's important. And you can, you can drill me in the comments. I'm open to getting drilled. So number one, no sugar until the child is two. It's your child. There's no benefit in the child having sugar. And there's tons of reasons that we're not gonna get into in this video of why your kids should not have sugar. So you're not doing anything bad to your kid by not giving them sugar until the age of two. I would even wait longer, me personally. Kid doesn't need a birthday cake at the age of two. They don't know, they don't know. Number two, no shoes. Do not ever cover your child's feet, ever, 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 ever. And there's a ton of reasons out there and you can start Googling them. Um, just on what, why shoes are so bad and why it's bad to lose ankle flexion and that it leads to overcompensation that your knees do or your hips do, which leads to injury in the future, but a ton of other reasons. And let's say, those, let's say none of those are true. I'm open to none of those being true, but do not put shoes on your child. You're only, you are reducing their mobility. You're making things more challenging from them and taking away muscle groups and things that should be activated that they own and should be developed when they're young. They're gonna be wearing shoes their entire life. Number, th so that's your, that's your second goal as, as part of your experiment or part of my experiment if I were to have a child today. Number three, do, I detest carriers and strollers and anything that makes it so that you can carry or move your baby without thought. Sevon, you didn't use a stroller? No, I loved a stroller. I took a stroller everywhere with me. Stroller does have its place. And, and by no means am I suggesting I'm perfect. But with my first child, if my wife and I were to go out on a five mile walk, I would carry the baby. And if I got tired of carrying the baby, I would set the baby down or I would hand it off to my wife. I see baby carriers and strollers being used um, as, as a crutch. It should not be a crutch. It should be a tool that's crazy valued and 
only use when necessary. For example, you have twins and a third kid and you need to carry your twins in the carrier because you need to do something with your third kid and you're some super mom. And I've seen, I see that. I see moms rocking the carrier with their two other kids at jiu-jitsu or vice versa, a mom with twins and the other kid, you know, in gymnastics. You see that. No problem. But if you're just walking to the coffee shop and it's a mile, do not bring a carrier. I see so many people using carriers like it's just like an accessory. They treat the baby like an accessory. Avoid that at all costs. And the stroller should be there so when you're at the beer garden, the kid has a place to sleep. Or it's a place where you bring their diapers or carry all their shit around. But you should as much as you can let your baby be free range or you should be carrying your baby. Either you should be getting stronger or the baby should be getting stronger. Pretty, pretty easy to do. Requires discipline. But I highly recommend that for two years. Going back to the shoe thing. Don't cover your child at all, period. What does that mean? No shoes, no shirt, no pants. There's no reason to cover the skin. There's no reason to put anything on the skin. Uh-oh, a little common sense. Of course, if it's you have them at the beach and the sun's blaring or it's freezing cold outside. But I'm talking about in your house. You only It's brand new skin. It's brand new. And I don't want to get into some hippie shit, but why would you put something on there to desensitize it, to cover it up? They're going to be wearing clothes their entire life. Let your kid be free. Kids don't need pajamas. You're going to notice right away that kids overheat. Most kids overheat. Like you just put them in bed, they seem like they're a good temperature, and you come back 10 minutes later and they're covered in sweat and they have the blankets kicked off of them. Your kids just need to sleep in a pair of boxer shorts or nothing, naked. Kids do not need to be covered. Common sense though, right? We're not going to leave them out in the snow. We're not going to leave them in the blazing sun. So these are the three things. One, no sugar. Just no sugar. They, they don't need sugar. Number two, uh, no, no shoes, no clothes. Minim, minimal, minimal. But I take them to church and they need clothes. Fine, put some clothes on them. But do they need shoes in church? Are you worried someone's going to judge you? Like, what, like, why do they need shoes? Uh... And the clothes can be so minimal. They can be so minimal. The second you get home, undress your kids. Let them be free. Uh, and I know a bunch of you are going to be like, my kids hate having clothes on too. Yeah, nobody, nobody wants their fresh, brand new, really sensitive skin covered. They don't want to be separate from the air. They don't want to be separate from all the things that they're able to sense. And number three, minimize the carrier. Minimize, I've, as, my wife used a carrier and she had reasons to use it. I never use the carrier. I, and, and, and when I brought the stroller, there was like, I knew what I needed the stroller for. It wasn't just something just to push the kid around in. It, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And the kid is your experiment. And those first two years are so important. Give your kid as much opportunity to be free, to experience the world, and to develop naturally. Now, let's say all three of these things... I'm telling you there's, there's no point to them. Let's say it's like, hey, it, that doesn't matter. Well, we'll tell you this. If you don't give your kid sugar until they're two or three, you don't get them a birthday cake, you're not hurting your child at all. But if you do give it to your child, I would argue you are hurting your child. Let's say it's pointless to, to, to ha wear shoes or not wear shoes. I will, I, will, I will argue that not putting shoes on your kid would, won't hurt your kid. Common sense. If there's like needles on the ground everywhere, maybe you should pick your kid up or put shoes on them. But not putting shoes on your kid will not hurt your child. And number three, letting your kid um, cruise around and, and, and not be sleeping in pajamas or what you think is cute or having those headbands on or, or having, um, uh, wearing onesies that cover their feet. If you don't put those on your kid, no harm will come to your child. So what I'm offering is, is at worst neutral and at best something that your child will take with them in their development until the day they die. Did I do all of those things with my kid? You know, it's funny is I want to tell you I did, but then when I go back and look at pictures, I see like my kids wearing shoes in places and things like that. And I see them like at home with like a shirt on. Even though people on Instagram were always saying to me, oh my God, your kids are never dressed. But it happens. But 
on the kid's first birthday, we didn't get them a, we didn't get them a cake. We didn't do those. I didn't even have these goals, by the way. These weren't like goals I had, but if I were to do it again, I would set those up as goals. More and more as I get older and older, I'm realizing that my kids are, are my legacy. They're, they are my greatest experiment. They are my greatest contribution to humanity. And I didn't even, I didn't even, I always thought legacy was stupid. Like who cares about legacy? You're going to die anyway. Anyway, like people would donate all these money, money to hospitals or they want to make sure that their name gets left intact. And I still don't care about any of that. That, it, that actually seems absurd to me, but your child is your experiment and it is your legacy. It is what you are leaving on the planet behind. And you should take your experiment very, very, very seriously. All of these things that I'm saying to you, that I'm throwing out there, and, and, and feel free to add your own things, things that you think that, and, and if you don't, if you don't, if you're like me, you know, you know nothing about parenting and you knew nothing about it when you got into it and you didn't read any books, choose things that are benign. Realize that there's things out there, choose things that are benign in your experiment. Like don't choose like, um, if you're not a nutrition expert, don't be like, Oh, I'm going to make my kid carnivore or I'm going to make my kid vegan or I'm going to like, like, I don't know. I, I'll experiment with myself like that. I won't experiment with my kid like that. I give my kid a balanced meal. What do I mean by balanced? Like a zone meal. So, and that's because, because it, that's not part of, I haven't taken that on as, as part of my experiment. The only part I've taken on in my experiment is no sugar. Anyway, the point was to give you three things that if, if you're about to have a kid that you could that you could possibly agree on with your your spouse and um, you could make those goals you could pick different goals um, you could pick something like hey let's make sure we give our child um, 10 minutes of tummy, tummy time regardless of how loud they scream or cry we'll set a timer 10 minutes five times a day until they crawl another great goal you pick the goals but don't miss the opportunity the big picture of what I'm trying to share with you is don't miss the opportunity to realize that your child is your greatest experiment and it is your experiment and you don't, as long as you stay within the boundaries of being safe and using common sense, you will reap what you sow. And so if you give your kid um, good foundational elements in your, exper in your experiment, you will reap the benefits of it. You will see you have a stronger, smarter, faster, healthier child, more capable. And on a final note, which needs, will be its own whole video, and I've talked about it in tons of videos, if you don't set really strict boundaries for your child, you won't like your child, and your child will hold you hostage, and enforcing and, and working with your experiment won't be fun, and you'll abandon your experiment. So what does that mean to set boundaries? And I'll give one specifically to people who are having newborns. There's going to become a point when your child starts moving, becomes ambulatory. It's like somewhere between, it's not quite crawling, but they're going to want to go after objects everywhere. Make a spot that is your kid's spot. So for instance, in our kitchen, we had a drawer that was the kid's drawer and inside of it was just like Tupperware and like plastic, big plastic spoons and stuff. That's your kid's drawer. Now it knows its boundaries. You don't need to put uh, um, locks and stuff on all the cabinets unless you have chemicals and poisons in there. But I take all that shit out anyway because I'm not risking for a second my kid get hurt by um, accidentally drinking bleach because the lock didn't work. But um, you don't need locks and stuff if you don't have any chemicals or bad stuff in your drawers. All you need to do is be really strict with that boundary. And an eight month old or a seven month old can learn that. You just have to speak to them like they're an adult and keep redirecting them. Redirect, redirect. So that is a strict boundary you can set right away. And now your kid's free. And so you and your wife or your husband can be in the house and your kid, whenever they want to play in the kitchen, they will go to that drawer and they'll learn it remarkably fast. And now you have a child you like. And the more of these boundaries and rules you set, the more freedom the child can have. The more freedom the child can have, the more you can tinker with your experiment. Whew, that's a lot. I hope that helps. Um, I apologize for any absolutes I spoke in except for sugar. And uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it. And, and just because all the other 
tools of the man are doing things like pacifiers doesn't mean you have to do them. 